Hey, it's Jason. I'm back. Uh, guys, I've got uh, a lot of material here. One five. Uh, I've gotten to the point where I think I've actually gone way too far. Um, so I'm going to cover what I have here. Hopefully um, we'll get more out of this than what Cisco wants you to look at. Uh, and, you know, pay attention to, to I guess, the, the basics here. Uh, outside of that, I just kind of added in some uh, what I feel like maybe some real world type type information. Uh, that's going to help us probably further in in this uh, this exam, but not necessarily uh, probably directly for this topic. So I'm going to get started. Uh, hopefully we don't run long or have to make more than one video here. Um, so uh, one five. Uh, this is uh, explain the benefits of organizing code into methods, functions, classes, and modules. Um, the first thing we need to do is understand what what are those. Uh, what, what does that mean? Um, so a function is um, a block uh, statement performs a specific task, uh, right? So if we just go down here and we just look at this, this is a function. Um, it's that simple. You define a function uh, and, and the task within that function uh, and as a whole it's a function. Uh, method is the exact same thing as a function. A lot of times you'll hear me, I interchangeably say function, method, a lot of times I should be saying method because I'm dealing with a, a class, um, but uh, realistically we interchange the terms probably a bit much. Um, where this is really important is you, when you're using IDEs, etc., uh, and they will kind of uh, help you in your development process and you're looking for um, a function. Uh, uh, and a lot of times they'll have uh, in the IDE something that, that indicates whether you know it's a function or a method whenever you, you're um, looking through the context. Um, but other than that, in my opinion, it, it, it's just a term to describe something. Um, so method is just a function inside of a class. Uh, the class is uh, a template um, kind of um, describing an object. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to contain uh, methods inside of it. Um, that are specific to that object, uh, as well as data that is specific to that object. And so, when you define that template, you can you can create multiple instances of that class uh, that then become objects, uh, and you can use them independently. Um, module. So, a module is basically a modular piece of code. Uh, that, that's really all that that means. Um, you import it like libraries. Uh, same thing. Um, so let's go down through here uh, to kind of uh, uh, help describe what these things are. So the, these are the modules here uh, and I, I did this um, in order to just kind of show you how this works. Um, so um, I have a module uh, in, where did I save this? Um, let me go back here um, and I believe I put it under the, oh yeah, example module. So uh, it's right here. Uh, and you'll notice this, this init pi in this structure. Um, the reason for that is whenever you are building a package module, um, you put this file here to indicate to Python that it is part of that package. Um, so for instance, whenever I'm importing, You'll notice I import from exam material, uh, and then I uh, go into the child off of that, and the only child that's available, uh, even though all these folders are here, uh, the only child that's available is this uh, example module. Uh, and the reason for that is because there's just this empty file, uh, this initpy file here. There are ways to do this with namespaces. This is just the way that I've always done it, um, and so I'm just a creature of habit. Um, so anyways, that example module is right here, um, and it's simple. It's, it's literally the same functions that I had in the, in the file before, other than the fact that I'm just kind of showing you that I'm importing it. So let's get back to, um, to that. Um, so uh, what I did was, you can see right here, right, from exam material, that's that, that uh, top level folder with the init pi in it, uh, dot uh, example underscore module. Uh, that's the uh, the child folder to that top level folder that has the init pi in it, uh, and then here's the pi file, example module. 
And then uh, here's an example. I could have just imported this entire uh, module file uh, and then used this dot my module function or dot module class construct. But what I did was I went into the file and I imported out this function that was in the file. And I also imported in this class that was in the file. Um, so here I'm just giving an example. Um, I've got a function uh, inside this organizing code pi. I run it. It just prints out my function. Uh, and then I've got an example of a class. Uh, and inside that class I have a method which is a function moved inside of the class. And so we call it a method now. Um, and then we execute it. Um, and then we execute the method inside the class. Uh, we execute a function from the module, right? So we imported that function uh, here. So that is the um, the exact same thing. Uh, we just imported it from the module, um, and then we um, execute uh, the method in the class from the module. Um, so one thing you notice here, in order to execute a method, um, you have to have an instance of an object um, because that uh, method is defined inside of this uh, object, um, it has to exist and it doesn't exist. Right now it's just a, a class or a, a template for an object. Um, so we instantiate it uh, and then we run the method. Uh, and this is just down here an example of importing a class uh, from another file. Uh, and then uh, once we uh, instantiate that, that class here, we use the class and then the method uh, that is inside of that class. Um, let's see here. So uh, I already talked about the init files uh, in order. Uh, 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 yep. So parent-child relationships. I think we have that part covered. Okay. Um, so let's talk about those benefits. Uh, classes and methods allow us to contain both function, method, and data within the referenceable object. Um, so I guess we can look at this as an example. Um, so we define a parent object and um, it is a definition of an object, right? We know this parent uh, species is human, uh, arms two, legs two, head one, torso one, uh, hair color, you know, whatever. I mean, this part right down here is, is not going to be common, but uh, I threw it in there anyways, but we also have some functions here to set that color. Um, and uh, if you know we want to change our arm count, our legs count, our head count, etc. So if I instantiate this object, this parent object here, um, I could call it whatever, parent A, uh, and then I instantiate another one, parent B. I can call these functions independently on those objects, uh, and they will um, have separate data per object. Um, and, and that's really the benefit uh, of, of, of objects, object oriented uh, uh, programming in general. Um, so let's see here. Um, so I wanted to cover um, class inheritance because I, I, I feel like this is important to the, the organization of the code. Um, so one thing that we do uh, or can do, um, we can, if we have, uh, for instance, a, an object or more than one object that have uh, commonalities uh, between the two, um, you can um, build a base uh, object or parent object um, that has all of the, um, the things that would be common between between these. So uh, if you look at it like this, this, this male uh, child here, I could take all of these functions and data and I could have just built an object here, a uh, male child, and it would have had, you know, species human and arms two, legs two, head one. And then if I instantiated this object, great. Uh, I have, you know, uh, uh, an object that contains everything that I need. Um, but uh, where the benefit comes in is, is maybe I need to build one that's, that's female. You know, this may not be the best of examples because I could have just went in here and, and, and made a variable for this child that said, you know, male, female, true, false, whatever, you know, uh, anyway, 
Um, but I think just the the overall kind of structure of this and, and kind of the, the way I tried to do it here was to kind of relate it to something that, that, that you would know or understand from, from just a parent-child relationship. Uh, and that's why I did it this way. Um, but uh, back to what I was talking about, the female child here could have all of these things also, right? So then you end up with two objects uh, with all of this extra code uh, and it just gets messy at some point. Uh, when realistically you could take out all those common things uh, and you can move those into the parent uh, and then inherit from the parent all of those methods uh, and, and um, variables. And that's what we did here. Uh, another uh, good organizational tip, um, these base objects, um, save them in another file use them as a module right um, and that just keeps this all clean it you know when you pull this up and and you you want to know what functions and, and variables are specific to uh, that child um, you may not want to look at all of this parent information you need to know that it's there uh, but you can see that right here so what we do is we we um, define the class and then we inherit uh, from the parent object um, so let's walk through this. Um, so uh, in every class, um, and I'm, I'm going to try not to go too much into just Python in general, um, but I feel like in some cases I'm going to have to go there. Um, so this isn't really obviously programming uh, class, but if um, if there are questions around some of this stuff, um, just message me. Uh, we can we can provide some information to to clear some some of this up because I am making a lot of assumptions on some things you may or may not already understand. Um, so in a class, um, whenever a class gets instantiated, um, the first thing that happens uh, is this init gets kicked off, uh, assuming you define one. In some cases, you may not want to do anything whenever it, it, gets, uh, it gets created. So we'll talk about this init. Um, so I put this print statement here to just show you kind of the order of operations. Uh, in the output below, so you can ignore that. Um, and then you don't necessarily have to do this step right here, um, but what this does, um, this will allow you to call the init from the parent. Otherwise, it, it will not call. Uh, the reason why is because anytime you define a, a function inside your, your child class, um, it's, if, it's, if it's the same thing, it will override the parent. Um, and then in order to uh, call those specific parent functions, uh, you can uh, reference the parent and then uh, call the function. And that's all this really is. Uh, it's it's uh, referencing the parent uh, and then calling the init, uh, which is not uh, is not being called whenever I instantiate uh, male child uh, because I'm overriding it here. Um, so uh, I wrote this disclaimer in here because I was just trying to uh, uh, provide some concept here, uh, and then I realize uh, you know someone might get offended by me saying boys like GI Joes and girls like Barbies. Can I know that that's not in every case? Uh, uh, so, um, anyways, uh, with that disclaimer, um, I'll continue here. So, um, anyway, um, so there's some specific things to uh, 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 boys. Uh, again, generalization. Um, maybe they get into trouble more often than, than girls. Um, maybe they like GI Joes. Uh, maybe they don't like Barbies, right? And you can see that the difference down here is that the girls, you know, maybe not. They don't get in trouble. Um, they don't like GI Joes, and maybe they like Barbies. Um, and so, anytime I instantiate this this uh, uh, female child, uh, these things are going to be different uh, here. But all of the inherited uh, uh, things up here uh, will be the same. Uh, now. Um, keep in mind, um, this is kind of, if, if you're a network engineer, um, the, the concepts, the you know, analogy might be you have uh, global uh, changes up here, uh, and then you have kind of inherited or more specific uh, changes down here. And generally, in that case, anytime you, you get more specific on something, those things uh, are, are override the, the, the global. Um, and as an example, I, I put this in here as an example. So uh, self uh, hair color uh, equals blonde. 
Uh, we know that we ran this init up here, um, but you'll see that um, down here, um, this hair color is brown uh, and it's not, uh, it, it's not, uh, um, I shouldn't say not, the, the blonde uh, hair color uh, is not uh, uh, inherited. Um, so, um, where are we? Um, so functions, we talked about uh, overriding functions. Um, so um, you'll notice here, and I talked about this print statement, uh, actually that one, and, and I haven't talked about this one, but I put this print statement in here, so whenever we uh, call this function, uh, you'll see which one actually runs. Um, and we will get there. So uh, we've talked about all of that. Um, so down here, what we do is, um, we instantiate a male child. Um, so now we have an object uh, instance right here, uh, male child object instance by instantiating male, male child. So what do we do with it? Uh, we'll set the arms to four uh, and we will set the hair color to red uh, and then we will serialize this so we can look at it. Uh, and that's gonna help us kind of understand what happened when we called these functions. Um, and then we do a female uh, object instance here we instantiate, set the legs count to three, uh, set the hair color to black. Um, and then um, same, same thing, we serialize it so we can look at it. Um, so here's the output. Um, we've got four legs. We know this is the male, obviously, but I think we probably should have added something to say the description is a male or, or, or anyways. Um, species is human. So we know that that didn't come from uh, the female or male. There's nothing in here to say uh, what the species is, uh, it's because that object inherited all the values uh, up here, these variables. Um, likes to get into trouble, true, likes G.I. Joe's, true, likes Barbie's false, yada yada. Um, um, but I think you get the idea. Um, so uh, child in it, so th this was a something to, I did to give you an idea of the order of operations. Um, so when we instantiate this, uh, the child in it kicks off here, right? Um, and then it goes down and then hits the parent in it. Boom, uh, which then comes back over here. Uh, and this is the function that's called. Uh, and then that's why you see that print statement. So, um, oh, sorry, whoops, that's up here actually, parent in it. So I got confused. Uh, so child in it and then uh, we call the parent uh, and then it, we got a print statement here to show that, that the parent in it kicks off. Um, so yeah, that should demonstrate uh, how classes uh, can be used uh, to make reusable modular code. Um, and I already covered this, written one class represent each child. Um, yeah, so uh, the nice thing about this, and I'll cover this one more time, is um, I mean, you could have more different types of children uh, that you went down here, and that could just go on so on and so forth, and so every time you create a child of that parent, you don't rewrite this code. So you save this amount of code, yeah, assuming you're not overwriting and, and, and doing some other things. But in general, um, this allows us to really uh, make our code more simplistic, more reusable, uh, smaller code base. Uh, and we can take these, these parent classes and move them into a module and just import them so they don't have to be here in this file, uh, which would um, possibly make this a little cleaner. Um, let's see here. Um, so this is where I probably went uh, too far, but I thought uh, some real world stuff uh, might be beneficial here uh, to kind of talk about how this might apply. Um, and that's where I went here. So um, switch class. So. Uh, I, I went in and I built um, a class or, or a class to just demonstrate what maybe a switch might look like, uh, what some of those functions you might do within that, uh, that object, uh, and, and that's what I was doing here. Um, also, uh, a side benefit of building this was to kind of uh, relate back to an earlier video, and, and we will get there in just a second. Um, so what I do here, I go ahead and instantiate this switch class. Uh, one thing you'll notice here, these variables, whenever I'm instantiating this, um, you've probably seen them before. They're in those data sets that we talked about. 
Um, and then I um, mentioned here uh, that we could have, um, you know, sent in the, the serial number information whenever we instantiated this object, but I wanted to show you that uh, we instantiate uh, the object uh, here, uh, and now we have, or I should say the class, uh, we, we instantiate that class, create the object, so we return that. Now we have an object for that switch. Um, so what we do, uh, we take that object, and there is a function inside uh, of that, that object, uh, set serial number. So you can see here, set serial number, uh, I give it a key and a value, uh, and it updates that dictionary that I've got on that object. Uh, one thing I did here, and this was just uh, as an example, uh, so it would remind me to talk about it uh, in these functions, uh, you may want to do some input validation. Um, it depends on, on if, if you know you want your, your application to blow up or not. Um, in most cases, obviously, if you're in control of this, um, that's not going to be an issue. Um, so yeah, so I do this on, on A. Uh, I, I do the same thing for another switch, B. Uh, and then I create a switches list here. Uh, and I append uh, the serialized data uh, to that switches list. Um, so here I made a, a um, I mean, realistically, I could have just uh, uh, called uh, the, uh, the object here uh, and then uh, the, the dict function here. Um, but uh, bear with me, this is just some examples. So I made a function inside this object, get serialized, which just returns uh, that dict, which is no different than me just calling it directly from the object, but uh, demonstrations. So, um, so yeah, I call it, uh, I return that, append it into this list, uh, and then uh, just to give you an idea of uh, how we could create an object a data set for, for JSON or XML, you're, you're trying to create this data. Um, that's why I did this. So then there's a JSON dict here, uh, and I make a um, an entry in it with the uh, key of switches, uh, the the value of this switches list, um, and then I print it out so you can look at it. So um, this is it, right? Now there's some fam familiarity uh, about this, and I did not build out uh, the entire uh, structure. Of what was in those example data sets, um, but you could, uh, and and generally, that's probably where you would start uh, in order to to generate those those uh, uh, data sets that we we saw earlier. Um, but yeah, so now you can uh, kind of get an idea of um, you know if I've got an application uh, and I'm doing some work on an object. Um, and I want to output uh, what that object looks like and send it to an, another application or, or, or store it or whatever, um, this is what you would do. Um, I've got it right here. Um, and dent. I am going to um, stop this for just a second. So where we left off was talking about, you know, how do we uh, work with uh, these objects serialize them uh, into data, uh, which goes back to the XML, JSON, and YAML. Uh, you could serialize an object uh, and and uh, and transfer it or store it. Um, and so down here, uh, uh, more detailed example of uh, class inheritance. I shouldn't say uh, more detailed. It's the, it's the same thing. It's just more orientated uh, towards uh, a network stuff or something you might do. On a network, uh, this was something I, I spun up uh, as fast as I could. So hopefully, there's not too many issues here, uh, and there's uh, some functions in here that don't actually do anything. I just put them in to, to kind of represent what you might do. Um, so what we did, um, we went in and like we talked about before, how we could take uh, a base class and move it out into another file. Uh, that's exactly what I did here. Um, so I took um, some of those. Uh, those things that might be common to a device, uh, move those into a class, uh, put them in another file, made sure I had the, the init pies down to that, that particular uh, location, 
um, which was already there. Uh, so it's in the same place, uh, exam material, example module. And then I named that file uh, base classes example, and then we import that class, uh, device base class. And so then we make um, a more specific switch class, uh, which I did not do the best of job here uh, with that. Uh, but uh, again, it was, it's just, just for example. Um, and so we, um, we build an init for it. Uh, and this, whenever you're, you're, you're instantiating your class, um, these uh, uh, parameters um, are um, what you would use to instantiate that class. So uh, if I wanted to, to create a switch class object, um, I can um, call that class, uh, pass in uh, my arguments, um, and, uh, and, and then use them in the class however, uh, you know, however you want to do that. Um, so, and then I, I called the init uh, for that base class, and, and honestly, I'm not sure why I'd have to open up the file, but um, I wanted to just show you an example of something that I may do here. Uh, so, one thing that was specific, and I was just trying to think about something that would be specific to the switch, uh, maybe the cam table is something that is, is very switch switch like um, obviously um, there might be a function uh, to um, set an interface uh, or or um, and actually this is more of a uh, creation of that that interface but uh, and then so a lot of times in these functions inside the objects you might have uh, set functions remove functions get functions uh, and and set would be like I'm, I'm gonna make a change to this object uh, remove might be I'm going to remove this uh, from this object uh, and then get would be maybe a return of that specific data uh, within the object. There are other ways to call this but just some examples. Um, so um, there is, uh, here's another example. So maybe I have stored uh, information about this, this switch uh, in a database or a, or a file or whatever uh, and I am trying to automate something against it. Uh, maybe I put uh, a variable in here for the target IP. Well, I hope you, I hope you do. <laughs> so, uh, because if that would be one of the more useful things you will need. Uh, and I thought, oh, okay, that explains it. Uh, the management interfaces, uh, yeah, I just didn't do anything with it. Um, so, uh, again, an example uh, might be um, you're wanting to um, black hole and MAC address on this particular switch. So you write some sort of automation that uh, will go into this object, uh, look at that IP address, uh, connect to the switch, however you're doing that. Maybe the switch supports APIs, maybe it's SSH. Uh, we can possibly go into some of that later, uh, and I'm sure we're going to cover quite a bit of it in these topics, uh, but there are lots of ways to do that. Uh, and then uh, you go in and, and you execute your, your command or, or API call on that switch, uh, with the MAC address that, that you, uh, that you um, supply to, to this function. And this actually doesn't do anything, as you can see here. Uh, I was just trying to give you some examples of some things that you may want to do. Um, maybe you want to shut down an interface uh, due to some sort of policy, something happened. Uh, maybe you want to profile something that's on an interface. Um, so, uh, you know, some things that I've done uh, is, is I may go in and collect information about an interface uh, and here's some examples, uh, maybe OUI, uh, the power profile, uh, CDP, uh, LLDP, uh, all this information you can pull off of the, the switch port uh, and make a determination of what you think that is. Granted, there are other ways to do this. Uh, obviously, there are NAC and we can go, you know, dot one x etc. Uh, uh, but this is something you, you could potentially think about. Um, sometimes, you know, uh, people are just plugging things in and you may not have a, a dynamic way of, of knowing what that is, and, and, and this is just an example of how you, you could possibly do that in that kind of a quick quick way. Um, so um, we already talked about um, this in the previous. So um, where are we? So benefits of using modules, a lot of the stuff I've already talked about um, and this will close us out uh, for this uh, this topic. Um, so um, modules, 
Um, you can write your own models. You can write them in Python. You, we talked about the init pi, being able to import, uh, etc. cetera. Um, these models can be in C, C++. Uh, you might want to look into uh, uh, Cython, some things like that. Uh, there's some other stuff out there. Um, that you can try to convert some of the, some of your Python um, and use it, or you can you could just write C. Um, so uh, the modules allow you to organize the code uh, separate separate files and folders, uh, and um, modularize our code reusability. Uh, so that's another thing. Modules uh, uh, you know will make it reusable. Um, it's easier to design, uh, comprehend, um, scale. Um, I think a lot of these things are um, probably um, well known uh, to most of us, uh, but you know, you, you're not going to want a file for, for an application that is just, uh, you know, 10,000 lines long, um, 20,000, 100,000 lines long, right? I mean, you know, at some point that doesn't make any sense. Uh, and uh, object-oriented code is uh, really just um, a much better way to organize your code than, than running it procedurally. Uh, procedurally is just kind of generally how the script works, uh, top to bottom. Uh, and um, I think that's it, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, um, let me know. Um, there's all this code is here. You can look through it. Um, and... Um, yeah, we're good. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, I will uh, uh, catch you in the next video.